So today I'm gonna to take you on a journey inside of my next flip. We're gonna go over the numbers here together. I'm gonna to compare and contrast the different ways you can buy, right? The different equations you can use, share with you what my equation is, how do I break down the numbers before we buy it to, to, to show the profit and holding costs and all that stuff. And then we're gonna take you to the property so you can walk through it, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you exactly what $40,000 will get you. This is gonna be a 3,000 square foot renovation. This is probably the biggest house. As a matter of fact, this is the biggest house I've ever done. So it's over 3,000 square foot house, but it doesn't need a lot of work, which is what enticed me to do this deal. So let's go over the numbers, then go to the house. Let's do it. Today's video is brought to you by PropStream. PropStream is the real estate software we're all using to access big data. Let me show you what that looks like. I've got a house here that I did a search on. It gives you the owner name, mailing address. It can show you the mortgage information. When did they get that loan? How much did they borrow? You can even see comparable sales. What are houses selling for in that area? Now here are some other filters that you can add to pull lists on any area that you like. You got bankruptcies, free and clear properties, vacant houses in that area, houses with high equity. Perhaps your seller has a lien on it, bank owned properties. Now here's the really cool part. Once you pull your lists from all those filters that you put in, you can then use this software to skip trace the owners to get their phone numbers and email addresses. Now I've negotiated a discount for the Roundup family. If you go to the link in the video description below, you can sign up for PropStream and, and get 50 free property pools as well. Use PropStream for all your big data needs. Greetings class, this is Chris Haskins with TheRealEstateRoundup.com. My mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. In doing that, I hope to show you how the numbers work, my equation, the other equations that are out there that people are using to borrow hard money. I want you to be aware, fully informed when you go out there to make an offer on your next investment property. Now the key to this training, and I need you to make sure you get this 100% clear, okay, Roundup, you can't use all equations for all price houses. Let me repeat that. A lot of us investors, right, we start out with the ARV, the uh, maximum allowable offer equals ARV times 0.7 minus repairs, right? That's generally speaking what we do, Mayo, right? Or you can do 0.65. A lot of people do that. A lot of hard money lenders do that too. But when you start getting up into the two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollar houses and beyond, <coughs> you won't be able to use this equation. And I'm going to show you why today. So before we go to the property, you're going to love this one, five bedroom, three bathroom, no, three and a half, one, two, three, three and a half bathrooms, great room, we're tearing down some walls, it's, it's going to be cool. Make sure you subscribe and so you can uh, see as this house comes together, but this is the first week, right? Five bedroom, three and a half bathroom, 3,000 square foot house, it's going to be nice. So here's my equation, hard money lender equation. My equation, hard money lender equation. Now, when you get to the two, three, four, five hundreds and beyond, this point seven five, this point seven is not going to work. So let me show you how we break it down, so I can make sure that my offer is reasonable. Right? You can't go in there offering somebody one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a three hundred and ten thousand dollar house that doesn't need that much work. It's just not. It's not going to work. For, you got to be reasonable in the real estate business, right? So the ARV on both sides, this is going to be my side, hard money side. This is the general equation kind of accepted by the general population when it comes to making offers. So we got ARV is 310, right? 310. Uh, my partner, Ron, he, he thinks this thing is worth a little bit more, but we shall see as we get closer to the end of the project. We're during the pandemic right in the middle of it. Real estate still booming. So I want to make sure that you get out there roundup. Don't be scared to get into the real estate business. People are still buying houses even more today because interest rates are so low. Okay. ARV 310 Reno, which, which is which we will be walking through very shortly. $40,000, right? I personally think it's going to be closer to 50, but Ron says 40. Let me tell you why I work with a uh, business people that have relationships. My business partner, Ron, right? He uh, can he has relationships with other contractors that work for major 
apartment complexes so we can get them after hours to do work for a reasonably priced a reasonable price right so your relationships are everything in this business rentals 40 i can't change the rental right on 40 that's just what it's going to be holding costs cost to sale usually i uh, average about 10 or 11 percent i just made it 30 31 thousand on both sides cost to sell 31 thousand these numbers here on my equation or the hard money side not going to change now don't forget hard money is nothing but a lender that's going to loan you the money based on the asset and not necessarily your ability to pay it back all right so where do things start to change where do things start to change when it comes down to the equation okay so my mayo maximum allowable offer goes like this 310k which is arv minus reno 40,000 we went over that there minus cost to sell holding cost 31,000 now here's where we change minus profit i want to make about if i'm going to have 250,000 out because it's costing me 40 for the rental right if i'm gonna have 240,000 out i want to make at least 40,000 right 35 to 40 right then that's not it may seem like a lot of money when you calculate it break it down into a six month deal you're talking about five thousand dollars a month five six thousand that's not major money you know that is the an, an ordinary income in america so back all this stuff out our maximum allowable offer equals one ninety nine thousand, aka i'm just going to call it two hundred thousand, which is what we bought it for okay so keep that in mind so let me go over that again mayo this is our arv minus repairs minus close uh cost to sell holding costs minus my profit and now i would recommend you to put your profit first profit first you got to take care of yourself, right? <clears throat> That's going to be right around 200,000. So we, we made this offer for 200, right? So let me go over here. The reason this is so important, Roundup, Chris, why is this? Why do I care about different equations? Because if you're using the 0 0.7, 0 0.65, you cannot compete with a guy that can make 40,000 and get in and out of the deal. Let me share with you. So here's the hard money equation, right? Mayo, I, I can't change the Mayo, right? That's 310. Now, the equation is times 70%, right? 70%, that's going to bring us down to 217,000, okay? Do we still have, now, okay, the 7%, I'm glad you asked, that's going to include your holding cost, closing cost, realtor fees, the buyer's closing cost, maintenance, utilities, all that stuff, which I calculate right here. I put it in here, it calculates roughly the same thing, right? All that closing costs and all that stuff, holding costs. So that's going to count. That gives you all that wrapped up in that 0.7. Now, where the numbers start to get skewed is when you back out of this equation here, your reno. Okay, your reno. You still got to back out your renovations, right? So we got 310 ARV times 0.7 is 217,000 minus repairs. Your Mayo is 177. That's, let's round it up to 180. And remember, some guys are using 0.65 right here. Okay, I know I do. 0.65 I have so your mayo down here is 177 for the hard money side and you probably won't be able to change that if you're borrowing hard money okay but if you're a cash guy using private money like we do we bring a lot of cash nowadays our offer is 20 plus thousand dollars more than the hard money offer okay so who's going to win this bid who's going to win roundup it's no question why would someone sell a property for 20 plus thousand dollars cheaper when they can get 200, right? So these are just all numbers in real estate are approximate. I remember I had to turn down a guy one time. He wanted to do business with me. He wanted to invest with me. He wanted to know every dollar, every expense down to the penny. How much you selling it for renovations? How much is a two by four tile floor, tile windows? I'm like, you know what? I don't have time. I, I can't do this. In real estate, the numbers are so big, right? You got to remember this. We don't even worry about down to the dollar or to the penny. We calculate these things down to the thousand, right? So it's either going to be 40, 45, 47. Either way, the numbers are big, right? So I had to turn this, this one particular investor down um, merely because I just don't have time and it doesn't make sense to crunch all these numbers down to the dollar, you know? So... I don't want you to do that too. You're gonna to waste a lot of time doing that. Okay, so you've got my equation, right? We paid 200,000 for this house. Keep in mind, as you get bigger numbers, this is gonna be way off, right? 
I mean, just imagine the $400,000 house times 0.7. I don't know what it is, but it's super low, right? And you just, those numbers, they, they just won't work, all right? So keep, uh, when you make an offer, when you make an offer, just remember your profit, holding costs, renovation. Those are the three. Renovation, holding costs slash closing costs, profit. If you can remember those, you can get your offer. Get it in there. So let's go over to this house. I'm going to walk you through it. Man, this is a sweet one. First time, I don't have to do a renovation to a bathroom. They already did the renovation to the bathroom. You are going to love this. And we're not calling it master bedroom, master bathroom anymore. So it's going to be the primary bathroom, primary bedroom. That's something that's, that's new coming down the pipeline. So let's go look at this property. And don't forget to take a second to subscribe to my channel, like this content, share with any other real estate investors that are getting in the business that need to know this stuff. Thank you for letting me serve you, Roundup. I love you. Let's roll. Okay, so we're here at the house. Thank you for joining us over here. First thing I want to do is point out the neighborhood. Roundup, whenever you're in the neighborhood, Homevestors taught me, you have to look at the, not only your subject house, right? But you also have to look at the five or six houses down. So if you see here, we have pride of ownership. Everybody is cutting their grass across the street. Got a few bushes over there. Not too pretty, but it looks like to me, as you pan down, Ron, we've got pride of ownership in this neighborhood. What would you say about that, Ron? Yep. Houses looks good. So this is what attracted me when Ron brought me over here. I was nervous about the area. It's a rough street over a little bit, but when you come in here, you feel like home. It feels like home. So if you see here, we got a new roof, and we will have to do the windows. How many windows we got in here, Ron? Sixteen. Thanks for thanks for shooting this one, brother Ron. I got my camera on. I don't got a screen. I mean, I got my mic on. Hey, Baba. I'm gonna shoot her. I'm trying to teach the kids young. 22 windows, Ron. So how much in windows do we have on this job? We have 16 windows. Uh, 16 windows. About 160 a window. That's per the window, and how much to put them in? About 120 bucks. So it'll be about $300 a window. $300. This here needs to be pressure washed. Ron, do you think we're going to be able to keep this siding? If we do a soft wash. Soft wash. We will be okay. Are we doing anything here, or we're just going to keep it like this? Uh, we'll, oh, shoot. We can't go this way. We're just going to, I mean, are you adding anything here or just going to clean it up? That's a small thing. That's a few dollars, right? So I'm going to finish taking you around. I'm going to take you around the exterior. And then we'll go inside to take a look. So we got windows here. This is, seems to me to be an addition as we come over here. Hey, Bubba. You going to walk with us or no? Hey. Are we going to the pool today, Bo? So we've got the two-car garage. Two garage. Very nice. We're going through there. I can't get to the deck, Ron, so I got to come this way. So are we thinking we're going to keep the central heating in there? Oh, yeah, if you don't mind. Try, uh, be cognizant of the... It get, kind of comes out shaky a little bit. You think we can keep this, Ron, or you think we got to let it go? So R22 is the old Freon. Yeah, when we do our home inspection, they're going to ask us to replace it anyway. Ah, uh, home inspector probably going to ask us to. So this deck here, luckily we have a new roof. This deck, do you think we're going to have to replace the whole deck, Brother Ron? So we're going to start off by demoing the back section, mm -hmm. and we'll see once we... Demo the back sections. Yeah, once we take out the back sections, we'll see where we are. So we're going to... save as much as possible. Okay, our goal here is to save as much as possible. However, depending on how bad it is, when we start un unpeeling, peeling back the onion, we have to delete it all. So we're looking at what three grand at the most, thirty five hundred. Yeah, about three thousand, thirty five hundred. Yeah. Sounds good. Is that the garage? Oh, no, that's the that's the dining room. Game. Oh, that's right. Wait till you see this bath, this primary bathroom round up. You are in for a treat. Mm. This is probably the baddest bathroom I've ever seen in the flip. What about you, Ron? I was amazed. You know, there's too many bathrooms that are in that good of condition. Heck no, never in that good of condition. So this is the side, this is a little addition they put on here. 
Very nice. No work here. If you see under here, it's all, I mean, this has all been buttoned up. Nothing to be done. Everything looks good. Air condition's hitting. Yeah, that old Freon. So this is going to be your great room where everybody's going to hang out. Or will we be replacing the fans, Ron, or keeping them? I would say keep them. I would too. Yeah, that's fine. Man, shoot, keep them. Never have we been able to keep fans before. Uh, this is going to be our utility room. We've got a washer and dryer hookup here. We don't have anything in here, right, other than paint? This paint. That's this paint. paint. Very nice. Can we put new cans in there. We've got to just paint this, and it's over. Let's go to the master before we get to that kitchen. So this flooring in here, we might... We definitely, go ahead, Ron. Cover it up. Cover it up, okay. We're gonna keep all this flooring, right? Yes. Look at this roundup. Flooring good to go, just dirty. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is your master suite. Look at the ceiling, the fan's good. Ron, you keep that too? Yep, the fan's good. Gotcha. Everything in here, pretty much just paint. Just paint in here. Yep. Got a master primary closet. So this is gonna be the primary bathroom. It looks a little nasty now just because it's they right, yeah. took that drought, that uh, wallpaper. Wallpaper off, that's how to try and save, but. Man, shoot. You know how that goes. So we just sand it down a little bit and paint over it? He's gonna try to take it off and then the other wall, maybe try to save as much as possible. And just give him a show over there. there. Yeah. Really? We're probably at the point we have to replace it. Take it off now. Really? At the end of the day, worst case, we'll have to do that or put some wainscoting over it or you think we will be able to take it off? We can take it off. Just get rid of it. So this shower here, check this out. I mean, this is just floor. The tile here, whoever did this did a phenomenal job. Tile up to the ceiling. Got new fixtures in here. I'll let you go and show them that. New fixtures, new hardware, new trim, everything. And another shower here. <coughs> new tile. So we have the toilet in there. Y'all can see that. There you go. I like the fact that the toilet has its own door. Yes. You can stank it up and keep moving. Are well, we keeping this vanity runner? I think you want, did you want to put granite in Oh yeah, we're going to swap the tops out. Yeah, we're going to paint this, paint, paint those white. I'm good with that. Paint white, let's place the top. Let's do it, let's do it. Wait, I'm listening, Bubba. Taylor, y'all switch out the chair. Let Bubba have the chair now, please. We got another closet here. Well, this is his closet. We ain't got nothing anyway. All right, so the floor here, boom, boom, boom. This is a little bubble. Taylor, let bubble have the chair for a minute. A little office space, right? Nothing too important. Okay, here we go, the Mac Daddy. Now I'm gonna show you some before and afters on this thing, right? Cause we, I didn't even, they started, Ron started so quick, I wasn't even able to. Let Taylor, let her have the seat for a minute. I wasn't even able, kids, kids. Trying to teach them young. We'll show you before and after. Let's swap that. You'll see that picture. So what we got to know here, Ron? What we gonna do? Do you know yet? Granite everywhere. Very nice with the prop. Other than closing this out. Gotcha. We're definitely gonna close this up, right? Close this up, we'll do a configuration here. Yep. This wall's coming out here. Yes, out. Get a bar here. Yep. We'll be able to see this thing is gonna be nice and big. Oh man, it's gonna be, this is gonna be the, when they walk in, it's gonna feel huge. Uh, I might take away some of that pantry, but it's just. Oh, for the refrigerator? Yeah, but uh, we'll see how the layout comes. Yeah, that's gonna, it. it's gonna be a rough one taking that pantry out. All this stuff here, we get new flooring from the towel into from the kitchen into here, Ron? Yes. Gotcha. All right. So this is kind of like a play area for the kids. Oh, yeah. You want to give them that bathroom there? Forgot to cover the bathroom. This will get what? New top? New top. Keep that? Try to save the vanity. Keep the vanity. Board to cover the towel. Cover all that towel up. It's going to look brand new. New toilet or keep the toilet? The toilet. I think the toilet. Sorry. Good to go? This is just a den. In here, all we're gonna do is just replace the ceiling and sand these floors and we're done. I love it when you don't have a lot of work to do inside of a room. So these floors, luckily under this linoleum here, under this linoleum was uh, hardwoods. Look at that. 
I mean, hardwood floors, they're older than Ron and I probably put together, and they will last probably until we're gone off planet Earth. Hardwood floors last forever. The day we came from there. Let's do it. That door gets replaced too. That's a big old house, man. It's a big boy. Thank you. This is going to be our communal bathroom here, where Ron says that we're going to demo all this towel. You want to get my pan? We'll show you the before. You can just pan it from out there. So all this towel goes. New sheetrock here, and then new floor, new towel surround for the tub. You going to do something sexy in there, Ron? Yeah. It's this here. is yeah. This over here. Yeah. We'll keep it a tub. I'm sorry. Tub. Keep the tub, turn it white. Right. Blue tub. Yeah, yikes. New flooring and that's it. New vanity. Simple. So right now we're at what? 40,000? Yep. 40,000. So this is like a another primary bedroom. So it's not as big as the one downstairs. This, this place actually has two primary, bed, one, uh, primary bedrooms because you have a bathroom in, an, in each room, right? So this has a closet and is isn't as big. Is this? Oh, shoot. Okay. You can roll, man. We're not even here. So, it's going to be a little tight for a closet space. But here is our bathroom for the upstairs primary. They already busted this out. And what we'll do is we'll put... Are we sheet rocking over this one or scraping it down? We're going to try to scrape it and just Scrape it, it down. Smooth it out. We're gonna put sheetrock here, smooth it out, maybe with some plaster, perhaps. I don't know. Possibly. And then we're gonna towel all this around. We got lucky with this roundup. If you notice, Ron, get over there. You can shoot over here. I'm sorry, you stand over there. We got lucky with this. We didn't have to take all this uh, cement board out, right? Usually you got about three inches of cement going all the way around here. So I would say we got lucky with this. And that is that. So I guess that, that this job is done with that, right? Yes, sir. That's it. So that's going to be forty plus forty thousand plus, and this is our first week roundup. <clears throat> so stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. You'll see how this project comes along because this is the first week. Ron is really kicking booty, getting this thing done quickly. Man, it just feels so good. And this feels like I can already feel the flow of the room, right? All right, guys. I'll see you next time.